Now, Dende, I'm going to just require you to just be silent for about 20 minutes, okay? If I hear you speak, bro, we, we slap in that dome. I'm going to pull up the video. I'm already not liking the... I'm already not liking the title, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah, we're going to finish this video and then watch Globkus. Arena Fighter template back in 2002 with the introduction of the Budokai series? Yeah. The franchise has felt like it's been stuck in a hyperbolic time chamber. He's already wrong, bro. We've been loving it. With over 20 different DBZ Arena Fighters released in the past 20 years, Sparking Zero promises to be more of an exercise in nostalgia than an actual competitive fighting game. But she's got a new hat. Dragon Ball fans deserve better. Full bro. Does he, bro, he's like, I'm getting aggravated watching this. He's like... Disclosure? He's not connected to the real fans of this game. He doesn't know how excited we are to, to even play this game. Has, has he not seen one live stream? From Rose or in the Kuba, have he not seen the trailers? I don't think it shows too much. He goes into how it works. Up to you, though. All right, all right. I've been a huge Dragon Ball fan since I stumbled across it on Spanish Access Television when I was ten years old. I love Dragon Ball. Okay, it means more to me than any other animated franchise. I name my character Piccolo Ball and sometimes dress him up like Lord Beerus. That's why I need. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Dragon Ball fans deserve better from the non-Dragon Ball fan. Dragon Ball Z to do better. Looking back on the past is comforting, but we can't live in it forever. We deserve either a transformative leap forward for the series. True. Or a sequel to the only transcendent Dragon Ball game over the last decade. Now, he's not wrong. They should always improve. The only thing is, is that we just stopped. We just thought they stopped with that branch which was the best branch in the dragon ball game series we just thought they ended it and they were trying to like give us these bootleg ones but xenoverse i feel like would have been an amazing game if we just gave that one time like if you look at xenoverse 6 you know whatever that it's going to look like i can assume it's going to be amazing so and fighter z yeah if they just made a sequel to this I mean, this one's already still good. I already like uh, Fighters, but... Bro got cooked in a comment section? Dude just yapping. Just put my fries in the bag, bro. <laughs> $100 well spent. Who else? Bro, that's what I'm saying. I'm glad, bro. Dragon Ball fans, I love you guys, bro. Y'all... That shit. I played Dragon Ball Sparking funny. Zero, and unfortunately, my fears were confirmed. It's, it's like, I don't know. I think it's rage baiting. I feel like that's a form of Dragon Ball sparking videos. There's two forms of content. The ones that are on the news and the rage baiters. This is deja vu all over. My mantra now he's about to talk about how we they use the same story and that's okay. Just give us the gameplay. The every next level demands a different I mean we do like Purdue innovation. Is giving me an opportunity. They are doing that with Diamond Super. Now but the sparking zero graphics are the best they've ever been. And I applaud them for having destructible environments and trees that sway when hit with key power. But graphics alone do not make a game. He's not talking about the combat? The hand-to-hand -hand combat? When you dissect a match, it's much slower than it looks. Nine... Nine hours ago. And he said... And he's talking about the speed... Bro, he is not even updated. He's going to be blown off his boots. I know he's I know he's reading them comments, bro. He's reading them. Unless he's smiling with rage baiting, but... Real impact and damage is far apart. And it doesn't have the back and forth, keep them guessing momentum battles of top fighting games. It does. We're seeing stagnation in the gameplay sphere. Where Sparking Zero is extremely similar to the last several dozen Dragon Ball Arena fighters. It feels more like the return of the EA Sports College football franchise than a new spin on Dragon Ball. Up. Is that true? I'm not like, I never played the old EA games, but is he saying as like the nostalgia came back? Because I can't really comment on that analogy he said, but 
I'm not gonna lie, like the hype, this was a dream. Like I feel like you can expect the college football to get a future game eventually in the future, but we never thought this would happen. It was like imagine if we didn't get Storm Connections and we got Storm 5 with this upgraded graphics. That's the type of like unexpectancy I'm talking about. Dated graphics with familiar controls. And I need to talk about those controls because if you've ever wondered what it's like to be one of the Z fighters, turn elsewhere because the controls are not great. I'm curious on what he's going to say. Dragon Ball is at its best when it delivers on fighting and yelling. And Sparking Zero does have a dedicated yell button. Yelling makes your special bar max out. And then you can pull off bigger moves and Kamehameha's. But it comes at the cost of pacing. Powering up freezes you in place while your special bar fills up, leaving you vulnerable to attack. Sure, that's part of DBZ, but it still makes the game feel clunky. And here's why. What? What? It's because the controls are too complex for casuals, but not technical enough for hardcore gamers. It's what? It's been 20 years since Dragon Ball Budokai 1, and transitioning from ground to air combat is still awkward. Locking on doesn't feel right. Ascending and descending could be streamlined, and it's not always clear if you whiff. It's because, bro, does he understand the controllers? It's been 20 years since Dragon Ball Budokai 1, and transitioning from ground to air combat is still awkward. Wait, he's, oh my god. Bro, is he saying this is, bro, he wants this to be a 2D fighting. I think he was expecting, bro, yeah, I, I know her. This guy is just lying to himself. I know it, it hurts to make this video. I know it took pain, bro. Word. Locking on doesn't feel right. Ascending and descending could be streamlined. And it's not always clear if you whiffed a beam because of something you did, or if you just weren't on the right plane. You might even find yourself fighting underwater, but doesn't slow you down or change anything at all. It just puts on a slightly different filter. The best... It, you charge slower. You charge slower. Now, I'm not going to lie. Getting that water... I think, see, we never... He must have never played the demo either, because we never had our hands on this game with our headphones, you know, with haptic feedback. Like, he... Is just making all of these accusations like he didn't he didn't see the changes. Fighting or games like Street the Fighter, Tekken, and Undernight in Birth feel like you're mimicking character motion, gathering power, and pushing a button to release it. That's what it is. There's an emphasis on frame advantage, timing, and spacing that can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Yes, that's what this it has to do. More of a dance at a higher level. Meanwhile, exactly. Sparking Zero feels like you're controlling a tank from very far away, and it's frustrating. Even the best fighting games can sometimes devolve into button mashing, but this uh -huh. is so counterintuitive that it borders on parody, which, hey, might be appropriate. Have you ever watched a Dragon Ball fight? He said it borders on parrying. No, that's true. So he complains that the game is slow, then complains that fighting underwater doesn't make you slower. <laughs> that's a good point, hold on. Damn is yeah, he's stupid, bro. What? When I was when I was seeing him say like it's a parry game. I want to say it's only because there's certain styles of fighting that would make you want to parry. So like I don't know. Parrying is in every game. Like, bro, Smash Brothers has parrying. So how can he be mad? In fact, I, he should be happy that the game has like a save card for everything. You play Jump Force, bro. You get caught in something, it's over. Uh, Storm, your stamina, you waste those four substitutions, it's over. Uh, Xenoverse, your, your, your key. Yeah, when your key is gone, it's over. But in Tenkaichi, there was always a counter. And it, it relied on skill. It is a parry system, yes, but then it becomes like a skill system, which makes it so great. It's not like people can spam, like, you know, in Xenoverse, or if there's like some sort of bug out there. If you still have the skill, you can win. Oh, parody? Bro, I'm sorry. I got aggravated over something he'd even say. I need to hit fast punches zone. that don't hit, a knock in a tank from very far away, and it's frustrating. 
Even the best fighting games can sometimes devolve into button mashing, but this is so counterintuitive that it borders on parody, which, hey, might be appropriate. <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you ever watched a Dragon Ball fight? It's all fast punches that don't hit, a knockdown, and a beam to finish it. It's awesome to watch. But when you're watching Goku punch so fast that those frames repeat, or is moving faster than your eyes can clock, that's primarily so animators don't have to draw as much. It looks it clean. It translate well to gameplay. Playing it is a different beast. It sucks all the energy out of something that, in the anime, was deliberately paced that way to save budget. So, what does Sparking Zero have going for it? Well, for one, he's there's a huge roster. He's complaining that it's not... Yeah, he how he's bro. He doesn't even know what the new updated gameplay looked like, and he uploaded this nine hours ago. He didn't even yeah, bro. He's not even. Fortunately, he made this video two years ago, and just saved it to upload it randomly. That's that's the best case scenario for this guy. There's almost no character differentiation. A lot of the characters share animation. What? Yeah, yeah. He's rage baited. Actions and combos. Functionally, there are probably closer to a dozen or so character types, and that's being generous. With 182 slots, who's champion at the bit to play characters like Nail and Kakunsa? If they're gonna go all out, I want some crazy characters. Bulma in a robot. Taco shirt Krillin. World That outfit might be in the game, and this one, there's a, a, a Master Roshi looking one that was like this. But, he said the farmer, I, hey, he was a meme. Oh, even Toyotaro bought Shotgun. Pay tribute to Toriyama by having one of his self-inserts be playable. There is an Toriyama aspect bot. of power scaling in Sparking Zero that's supposed to reflect the show's lore. Someone like Super Saiyan Blue Goku hits several times harder than Yamcha, which he well should, but that's a poor substitute for balance. Other games represent balance. Balance is a poor substitute for balance. It never been balanced, bro. Like, he's not a fan. Power differential matchups by showing different moves and impact. Still, because every Sparking Zero character feels the same with only slight differences, the best we can hope to get is the occasional character specific power up animation. But exploring a bunch of different martial arts styles, whether it's MMA or drunken boxing, brings life into fighting games. Street Fighter VI launched with 18 characters. For the most part, now, I bro, I talked about this in my video, and I, I want to link this to him because, bro, it there's different fighting games. Remember how people uh, were expecting the the DLC to be, you know, the characters that we are getting now. I was only able to make that prediction because I realized that Tenkaichi isn't in that category of fighting games. It was a Mugen, if anything. You know, I can't think of it like Smash Brothers is in that category. Naruto Storm is in that category. Uh, oh shit, Mortal Kombat 1 is about to be in that category. Uh, actually, no, 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 I take that back. But the thing is, is that it's like a 2D fighting game is meant to be super um, unique. Every character is meant to be super diverse. And uh, I don't know what's that word. It's like invested i guess like it's techie yeah they're they're meant to be having their own tech and it's for that competitive aspect as a 2d game he's comparing a 2d game to a 3d game th that's focused on just having hella characters with a sick ass battle mechanic that is more like a stress reliever or uh it was everybody's copium you know it was like the perfect way the world mediator could be handled with Spark and Zero. That's what I'm saying. Like, presidents could sit down and play Tenkaichi to debate. Like, that's this game. It's just meant to be that battle emulator. I feel like I'm falling for this dude's rage bait. This guy makes no sense. It says the characters are all the same, but then says he wants a separate a Krillin and a different shirt. It's, so, it's like a weird point. Like, why... Why well, want something so weird and then I don't know. His focus on like the demands for this game is is yeah, he's lying to himself. <laughs> don't most fighting games have goofy characters? Don't know what the guy is on about. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what he 
they played differently and oozed with unique styles. Grapplers, rushdown characters, zone types, stance types, and a bunch more. Chun Li has a different philosophy behind her than Zangief and demands a different playstyle. This doesn't really seem to be the case in Dragon Ball, where all characters are slight variations of Goku. Sparking Zero only has two archetypes, normal and big. It's not an entirely new mechanic, but it was a bit different to play as Uzaro Vegeta, a giant ape form that moved very slowly and had harder punches. But the controls are so floaty and tanky to begin with, it felt more frustrating than anything. So once you've played one character, you've basically played them all. Dragon Ball Z games might be all about fighting and yelling, but Dragon Ball as a whole is so much more. And the games have a hard time bringing that sense of fun and confidence to the forefront. Bruh, he doesn't know. He This dude's not cultured, bro, at all. I don't even know. This is what happens when people just want to hop in into a community with no research at all. It's, it's, bro, it's so crazy how he's just, he typed in chat GPT and he said everything he loved about the game. And he was like, now give me the opposite of what I just said and made this video. Don't most fighting. Oh yeah, my bad. I thought he said something new. Goku himself was heavily influenced by Journey to the West. Now this was sick. And I feel like Wukong was more like a, a, a app, you know, an appetizer for Dragon Ball Spark and Zero because, you know, both references. With his monkey tail, super strength and martial arts abilities, as well as his mischievous nature, Goku is a modern day Sun Wukong. Hey. As a matter of fact, Sun Wukong translates to Sun Goku in Japanese. And the first Dragon Ball series especially reflects that. It's far more grounded and focused on exploration. There are moments along the I way that would be DS. perfect for a new game. For all the talking cats and horny sidekicks Goku might come across, yeah, there's a crazy. sense of world building that's missing when it's conveyed solely through punching. Y'all remember when he, uh, when Kid Goku first met Bulma? Dragon Ball Origins was crazy. The anime hinges on big moments and relationships, like escaping the Red Ribbon Army with Bulma, or meeting Yamcha for the first time, or just how many bonds were formed during the first World Martial Arts Tournament. This game strips out all the context for these deep, meaningful friendships. Alright, man. He, bro. Everyone that pre-ordered this game, we already know the story. And matter of fact, we, we kind of tired of the story. We do like to see the new coded animations that they do to portray it. But it is not... We just want that gameplay, you know? That gameplay, that's... But... I don't know. He's talking about too how uh, Tenkaichi never been big on the, the the cutscenes for the story mode, and it was all right. I mean, sometimes they they did have them, and it was sick. Kakarot was amazing to have them, but uh, for Tenkaichi, they weren't really big on it, and it wasn't the issue because the combat was so fun. But the Z family is built on. I don't fault Sparking Zero for being one thing or turning it into a gameplay type, but Dragon Ball is many things. You might think, well, Sparking Zero has a dedicated story mode, but- He wants everything to be in this game. Bro, he wants there to be a city. He wants there to be like a, a getting into a car. He probably wants Goku to be able to cook and collect resources. He, he never probably seen Kakarot. I feel like Kakarot, someone should mail this man Kakarot for Christmas. But at this point, we've seen it. Dragon Ball games tread the same ground until it's paved over. The Game Boy games, Legacy of... Go See, look, and he's he's going to talk about the using the same storyline, but then he was complaining about it not representing that storyline. So it's like, he's saying, you're not showing all of it. And he's like, why are you always showing... All all of it like I don't know I don't know what he's arguing he does counter himself a lot Goku retold the Z story but had Goku punching wolves Kakarot retold Legacy the Z story awesome. in its entirety Xenoverse retold the story with some what if and time travel elements and included a somewhat lacking create a character yeah. Sparking Zero also has a story mode, but it'll be thin because we've seen it before. 
Where are the well thought out stories that challenge the player's perceptions rather than regurgitate it? It ain't about that, Heck, bro. Where's the story of Dragon Ball pre Z? I mean, we do How need more will OG in the manga? characters. Will we get manga only characters like Moro? Why not play know, through? They already answered these questions and now he's asking so much. Some of the less loved but still incredible movies like Super Android 13 or have Janemba's Hell as a stage. What about a baseball mode? There's so much ancillary content in the dragon. Yeah, he's he wants Kakarot to be fused with Tenkaichi. And it's like, that's kind of... I mean, they did have a flying thing in the Budokai Tenkaichi 2. But I can see that as like a sequel, a sequel to Sparking Zero. But he doesn't seem to be connected to know that the fans are just like, bro, we are just happy to know that this is a sequel coming out with a way bigger roster than this previous one and it's staying true to the base mechanics that we all love you know hopefully when we get our hands on it visually it's looking like it is but he doesn't seem to be connected to that and i don't know why he made this video Dragon ball world that is ripe a baseball mode that was in kakarot am i tripping what's up crystal knight dragon ball is the goat well, yeah, Captain told us about this video about gameology. Why Dragon Ball Sparking Zero feels so familiar and not in a good way. This guy does not know what he's talking about. For an adaptation that, unfortunately, will be left out for the greatest hits. And it could be a better love letter and feel like less of a money grab if they were acknowledged. Oh, Instead, it's, even, it, even if they did it like what he wants, they're going to make it a money grab regardless, bro. They're not going to make it all buttered up like what he wanted. And not find it a way where they can milk it more. Just get Frieza nah. blowing up Krillin for the millionth time. In my opinion, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is a much better use of the license and still has a robust, dedicated fan base after six. Yeah, now nah, he, yeah, see, he's a Budokai fan, and it's okay because I love Budokai. I love, I love Burst Limit. I never got to play it, but just from what I've seen, but he, I can tell that he's a Budokai two D fighter lover like like a fan like he's a diehard 2d because i mean he just Excuse. it's just obvious ultimately he keeps referencing it to a game that's um meant to be super techie per character like that's why there's not so many characters in these 2d fighting games it's because they put all their efforts in making sure everyone's techie that there's a a, a competitive aspect to it and they even stated in that interview when they first released the gameplay of Sparking Zero, it was on Virgil's uh, stream. He was he was at the live event, live streaming on YouTube, and the guy legit said that they wanted to have multiple realms of Dragon Ball Z experienced differently. So if people like the mobile version, um, you know, like a card swipe mode, you have it on the mobile. You have Legends and Dokkan. If you want the RPG feeling of Dragon Ball Z, take it with Kakarot. He even said it in his video that Kakarot portrayed the story perfectly. That's what they wanted. They they had the combat, but they wanted the story more. Then you have um shit, you have the RPG uh customize your character freedom, you know, create your mode type of thing with Xenoverse. They were focused on customization and, you know, freedom of with with the characters right they that's why they're kind of close with uh dragon ball heroes because of that freedomness with the, the character development how that you know how the story is if you guys seen that show but they have that separately so they treat dlc differently with that game like they'll sell a character they'll sell customizable moves and outfits and that's it that's why there's they sell them in um they sell so many behind a dlc paywall because each DLC comes with so much. And then with this game, it's like everything is by character. So they're going to just pump out characters. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. That's all I wanted Series to say. would be a better overall direction for the franchise. It's had just one main release and a handful of DLC over the last six years. And is a fresh take on the series, which is weird considering it's a 2D fighter. It's fast paced and competitive. So much so that it had a presence at the EVO tournament for five of the last six years. 
is because there are 44 they made it characters. And for the most part, they play differently and include some fighting game archetypes. How you been, Crystal? Present though? in arena. Not fighters. bad. I was ranting. It's relatively balanced with only a few insanely OP characters, but they literally just released a patch for that, and the graphics are still gorgeous. It Always. Needs more stages, and the menus are clunky. But that's true for most Dragon Ball. Nah, games. where's Janimba stage, bro? Where's the Jelly Bean stage? Where's Kami's Lookout? This game has to be true to the story. How are you going to complain about that on this new game, but you want to Glock Glock 3000 on this fighters, bro? This story, they, they didn't... He only liked this game because it had a, a, a weird story mode. It was just different, non-canon. So he liked the difference in the story mode, probably. And he likes the 2D fighting mode. That's it. That's all this game had. What about the baseball bat? <laughs> this dude is tripping. He's rage baiting me, bro. They play differently. And it's funny. Some fighting game archetypes that aren't present in arena fighters. Oh, uh, Captain, thank you for showing me that. I got to send this to my friend. I want to see his reaction. It's relatively balanced with only a few insanely OP characters, but they literally just released a patch for that. And the graphics are still is this gorgeous. This is a Dragon Ball Fighter Z. It needs more stages, and the menus are clunky. But that's true for most Dragon Ball games. He also oh, he does say it needs more stages. All right. Some moments that evoke nostalgia. But still, hey, he's not complaining about the the baseball mode though. Gohan and Goku's iconic father son Kamehameha would be a whole ass level in a Budokai game. Why can't the Budokai series just give the fans what we all came to see from the jump? We did, bro. You did not. No, you're not all Dragon Ball. You're you. You're you. Fighter Z does the same thing in special moves that only last a few seconds. There's so much more to mine there that going back to Arena Fighters for another release feels like a step backward. So he's he's kind of grouping fighters in his opinion. Like he's kind of saying all the Dragon Ball games haven't been hidden. Like what? Like the Budokai series. So he's been probably hawking out Dragon Ball games. I don't know since when, but it sounds like he's saying like they're not improving. They just keep like using the same old script. Is that what I'm getting? Why does he keep trying to speak for Dragon? I know which friend. Uh, darkness, blazing meat, and good. Wait, and good. Fighter Z was a one and done. Yeah, it was. It was nice. It, it satisfied that itch, you know? And they said it in that, like, they wanted to satisfy all the itches. The RPG, create your character, create your, uh, the immersive story mode, the awesome combat one, the one on mobile. Why does he keep trying to... Oh, yeah, no problem. The games industry has a bad habit of releasing rinse and repeat sequels. Now, yeah, see, the games, yeah, he's attacking the whole Dragon Ball uh, production since they probably made Budokai. In every new sports game or Call of Duty. You see, bro, he is a hater and how he's going to... Yeah. Year after year. At least COD has a different story every time, but Dragon Ball still retreads familiar ground. Want to see Goku sacrifice via special beam cannon in the Saiyan saga? Here it is, but you can switch to a first-person camera this time. Ultimately, Dragon Ball needs something more artful in execution. <laughs> Whatever the Dragon artful. Ball equivalent to Slow Clap's 2021 game Sifu, a 2D, yeah, 3D phase-shifting nice. game like Pokémon Tournament. Look, he went back to the 2D point, bro. I'm telling you, that's why he, he's coming from a 2D lover's fan point of view. So he's not even just coming from a gamer's. I'm, I'm legit thinking on a mediative uh, perspective. Like, a, I don't, did I say that right? Like, I'm trying to be a mediator. I'm trying to be unbiased when I'm watching this. And, I, like, you know, I'm accepting some of his points and not most of them. But I like 2D fighting games. I get where he's coming from. Like, Mortal Kombat 1 is awesome. Uh, how you said Fighter Z was awesome. Tekken is awesome. Street Fighter 6 is awesome. But, like, so is Naruto Storm. So is Demon Slayer. So is Dragon Ball Fighter or uh, Tenkaichi. He just he doesn't sound like he's appreciative of games. Like he's coming from a biased perspective. Or maybe something tight and technical with balanced ranged and melee combat, like Armored Core Six. 
According to he's trying to do a Dark Souls comparison. He can, he's comparing it to Call of Duty. What is going on, bro? Anti sales data. The Dragon Ball franchise has experienced diminishing returns since 2020. Oh, but it, bro, this dude, he's not even letting it like he's not even letting it ripen yet, bro. Just let Spark and Zero marinate and then recheck those charts. It requires innovation if it's going to continue. Look, look, this mod I told my brother about. They made this game on the PlayStation uh, called... I can pull it up right now. I feel like it's called... Uh, shit. What is it? It's some superhero emulator game. I swore I seen it right here. But I feel like they used that emulate. They, this one that he's showing you guys. I feel like they used that engine to make that continue game. Continue with this clip. So why go back to the well for another nostalgia fest? Being the official Tenkaichi 4 could be the kick in the pants the franchise. See, he's saying a nostalgia fest, but he just, bro, this is a dream. This is a sequel for a dream to come true. Like, we did have Raging Blast 2, but we knew that it wasn't Tenkaichi. Needs. But I think a new exciting direction is the way to go. This game will no doubt sell millions on name recognition alone. Here's the Glock Glock. I think its impact 3, will quickly fade. Or I don't think we'll talk about it the same way years after release. I hope I'm proven wrong though. Look, he's showing, like, he's even showing the good side of it. Um, but I think its impact will quickly fade. I don't. Its impact will quickly fade, bruh. Bruh. We are still playing the PS2. We, we are emulating it just so it can be in current existence. Just to play it, bro. And I think we'll know. talk about it the same way years after release. I hope I'm proven wrong, though. Yeah, he's rage baiting. The fact that he's hoping to be proven wrong, he knows he's wrong. So it's like... A lot of people look back fondly and call Tenkaichi 3 a high watermark. And they deserve to be happy, too. One of my friends is really excited about this game and couldn't give a flying nimbus about the game style being played out. I hope DBZ Sparking Zero is more than the same thing in Prettier Pack. So he knows he knows someone that is with it, bro. And he's still, yeah, he's doing this just to troll. I hope it outdoes itself and is more fun than I got from the matches I played. Maybe he, it'll exceed. He played. Oh yeah, he probably played the. But he played it and he's complaining. Oh yeah, he's trolling, bro. There's no way a person went and played it and was like, "This game is ass." There's no way. Because you have to have been one of. He must have known one of those tour dates, bro. He willingly went. Complaining about Sparking Zero being 2D is like complaining about COD being a first-person shooter. Why isn't it like uh, Metal Gear Solid? Metal Gear Solid is more immersive. You can do grenades. You can uh, distract enemies. You can. Where's that at in Call of Duty? I mean, they kind of got it now where you can like hook your gun up in Black Ops 6. But yeah, I see, bro. You, you know. Oh, yeah, 3D. Bro put out a review without even understanding the point of the game itself. The fact that you're comparing it to competitive fighting games should be enough to invalidate your whole review because of the sheer incompetence a comparison like that shows. The older Budokai games were never balanced. Never <laughs> balanced. Some characters were objectively way stronger than others, and that was by design. The game allowed you to play memes like Mr. Satan, but also honest in what the character's strength was in the show you can challenge yourself by playing characters that weren't top tier bro it was like a whole yeah like it was a whole emulator how how hard would it be for videl to take down piccolo you know how hard would it be for beerus to lose to goku super saiyan blue now we have this emulation to see things like that we can create our own what ifs now bro like there's the immersion there's a story mode is it's going to be on the custom battles it's like he yeah he didn't do anything it's also nice to see how the power levels bro if you just want fighter z2 just <laughs> just say so don't act like the og yeah he knows this dude's a 2d 2d fan this is so pointless the main point of the sparking zero is to feel like the original trilogy yes 
Yes, this game was made for the fans, bro. For the fans. They were not kidding when they said that statement. Resorting to rage bait. Yeah, okay, at least everybody understands what this dude is. What this dude is doing. Dude's not a real Dragon Ball fan. <laughs> hey, one of you guys comment on this? We're scoping the bottom of the brain cells barrel with this one. Did Perfection <laughs> write this script? Ah, uh, he is a uh, imperfection is spreading across in a bad way. Ain't no way you call Fighter Z an arena fighter. You call Legends an arena fighter, bruh. I don't care for Fighter Z. It's my least favorite Dragon Ball game. This story is mid to okay, and me personally, I don't enjoy PvP and fighting games because. Most of my opponents play the same. Feels like I'm fight the same guy over and over. Also, I have better things to do than watch video game tournaments. I mean, damn, he just I can't, he's shooting down everybody, bro. Bro just really crashed out for views with one of the dumbest takes I ever heard in my life. I know he he just crashed, bro. He threw away his old his whole review from saying, "I hope I'm proven wrong." I hope I'm proven wrong. You know, when I made the, the roster video, I was telling you guys that I'm standing on it, that that is true. Like, you have to make valid points in the video. Otherwise, he's going to bring, like, a bad take on YouTube videos for Spark and Zero. They're going to say that it's either rage baiting videos or it's um the news, right? That's crazy. Yeah, that's a crazy video, bro.